we are hearing you, so you can start and you have 16 minutes. I will make you a sign at three, four minutes from the end. All right. Um, okay. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mahmoud. I'm a PhD student from University of Sheffield, the Department of Physics. And today I'm uh, here to uh, present my recent work on chiral topological photonics in, uh, with embedded quantum dots. So the outline of my talks are gonna be, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, background of our field and a little bit of introduction. And then I'm gonna introduce the system we are working on and a chiral valley hole topological photonic crystal interface. And then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the comparison of a trivial and a non-trivial topological ledger state uh, in the same lattice. And then uh, the next part would be a little bit of uh, simulation and also experimental results on a topological ring resonator. And then the last part of my talk would be where we bring a chiral topological waveguide and a topological ring resonator together in a hybrid system and uh, demonstrate how we can observe chiral behavior in such system. So <clears throat> first, a little bit of introduction. So in a, in a uniform photonic crystal, we have bands and band gaps. And one of the interesting ideas that has been emerged quite rapidly in, in our field during the last decade has been to play with the ge geometry of our photonic crystals and find novel ways to uh, utilize uh, new ways to control the flow of light. So one way is to play with the geometry of your lattice and work with uh, this invariant called a chair number in your lattice and then see if you can find a way to open band gaps or form waveguides. The way we do that is if you have two different photonic crystal and bring them close together, and introduce an interface, as long as the chair number is not changed as you move from the left-hand side to the interface and to the right-hand side of the crystal, you, you, are, you will have your bands and your band gap, but then when you bring a, a discontinuity in your chair number, when you have a photonic crystal with, let's say, chair number zero, and then other photonic crystal with uh, non-zero chair number, and when you introduce the interface, the annihilation of the chair number necessitates uh, your band to cross the band gap, and um, we call these the topological edge states or interface states. The reason there's a, um, interest in this field is that, um, and there's, the reason that there's interest in these edge states is that it's been shown that they possess uh, unidirectionality and also topological protection, which we can see here. So propagation of light through these edge states uh, uh, can be protected against certain type of uh, defects or deformation in the lattice and also the intrinsic, they're intrinsically chiral. We have a forward running mode and a, uh, a backward running mode and this chirality is also quite of big interest for quantum optics. And then in the field of topological, uh, in the field of photonic crystals with embedded quantum dots, there are features that we are quite interested to see, and here I've presented a table to see, to, to see how topological systems sort of compare or uh, how we can look at them from this perspective. So in a, in a, in a waveguide geometry, we, we are interested in chirality. So these waveguides, as I mentioned, are intrinsically chiral. There's a consideration that the position of the quantum emitter in this system is important that I'm going to talk about later. Loss, they're usually quite low loss. There's a Again, another consideration, there's a certain class of topological system called the spin hole ones that they suffer from out of plane scattering, which, are, which I'll mention later. They're negligible in a SPAC scatter, which is very good. They're robust against certain type of imperfection, not all. Uh, uh, and then there's the beta factor that uh, this is not quite yet been fully investigated, but there are some promising results that people have shown. <clears throat> so, a little bit in the literature currently, you can have a look at what, what people do in this system. So the possibility of protected light propagating around sharp bends allows the formation of uh, uh, lasers with different shapes in this sort of coupled topological ring resonators. And also people have started to look at different type of lasers called bulk laser cavities. Again, same idea, photonic crystals with different topologies, having an interface and then 
having novel uh, lazing modes. And also people have been looking at um, corner states and sort of more complex topological systems where you have edge states, you have uh, then corner states, you have propagating modes and also localized modes. Um, but then in, in the field that I'm mostly working on, topological tonic crystals with embedded quantum dots. Also, there have been quite a lot of activities recently. We have the Arakawa's group uh, and Imamoto's group uh, um, who have been working on slow light waveguides where you have a tonic crystal with this slow light uh, waveguide mode that you can uh, study the Purcell enhancement or high uh, coupling between your emitter and your waveguide mode. Also, I've been looking at um, nanobeam systems where you introduce a topological interface, you have a strong localization, you can do this, you can use this to study uh, nonlinear quantum optics or enhance light matter interaction. And then half this group uh, in Maryland, which, which are, uh, which is the next presenter, I think, uh, also they've been, they're one of the pioneers of the um, chiral behavior in topological systems. Uh, in this case, you have a spin hole photonic crystal waveguide that you can observe the unidirectional propagation of light in a, in a waveguide and in a single photon regime. And then also in a valley hole system, in a more um, hybrid system where you have a unidirectional mode propagating around the ring and then you have a bus waveguide and you can access the chiral behavior uh, from a quantum emitter in your resonator and observe that. And uh, in addition to light enhanced light matter interaction, in our group here in Sheffield, we've also been looking at valley hole systems uh, recently in the um, in photonic crystals with embedded quantum dots. Again, trying to study and utilize the chiral behavior um, in this kind of systems. Also, we've, we've looked at spin hole system as well to form ring resonator modes uh, and see what we can do with those and what kind of uh, application they could offer in our field. So the next part of my talk now is going to be our recent results on uh, a chiral valley hole topological system. So the system is in a honeycomb lattice. We start from an unperturbed honeycomb lattice in a slab geometry, uh, about 180 nanometer thick, and we we form a honeycomb lattice, and then we start perturbing the lattice to open a photonic band gap. And as you can see here. So the dashed line is the open band gap and the solid line is the honeycomb lattice, which is a direct uh, point at K. And then by this per perturbation, we can open a band gap and match this band gap around near infrared region where our quantum dots um, uh, have photoluminescence. And then by introducing an interface between a uh, two version of this pertur perturbed lattice, we can open, we can uh, form topological edge states and um, through which we can form a in a vague geometry, we can have a robust propagation of light. Uh, the, the details of this, the formation of the edge state, the valley inversion, which results into formation of this uh, edge states are available in, in this reference in full details. Uh, here, what I'd like to talk about is in our system, we have a trivial mode and a non-trivial mode. So one of them is topologically protected. The other one is just a no normal trivial mode. This allows us to directly compare the difference between the two. And if I make, so one of the benefits of a topological edge state is the protection against sharp corners. So in I introduced this multiple band system and I have a look at a mode uh, in, in my non-trivial region. And as you can see, you can see uh, the light propagates without localization at the corners. And when I look at the full spectrum of a waveguide mode in such a system, you can see that within the non-trivial region, you can get uh, robust propagation of light, whereas in the trivial region, the light, uh, the propagating mode or the backscatters or gets localized at the corners. So here we can directly see the difference in the same lattice and the advantage offered by the topological um, edge state. Uh, the next part is to have a look at unidirectionality. Um, so as I mentioned in the introduction part of my talk, um, it's not that simple that just because you have an edge state, anything can propagate in a unidirectional manner. When you have a quantum emitter, we calculate a map called the chiral map or the S3 Stokes parameter. It shows us where are the regions near our interface 
where th there's a strong um, uh, and high chiral contrast. And if your quantum meter is, let's say, here in one of these high contrast areas, it can uh, couple to our waveguide mode in a chiral manner. But it, depending where it is, it might not behave that, that way. So it's good to have these maps before we uh, do such experiments. Um, so if I do uh, FTTD simulation, if a, if a quantum emitter is one of these high chiral areas, you can have chiral behavior, sigma plus and sigma minus light. Uh, they will uh, propagate in opposite direction. We experimentally put this to test and we make a waveguide slab uh, with gallium arsenide, embedded indium arsenide uh, quantum dots embedded in our lattice. So here I perform a raster map of my lattice, uh, which demonstrates where are the quantum dots that are coupled to our waveguide mode. As you can see, they are tightly confined to the interface as we expect. So that's where we, we have our quantum dots coupled to our waveguide. And then we know by applying an external magnetic field, uh, we can split the transition into sigma plus and sigma minus as predicted by the simulation. They will propagate in opposite direction, which we can collect from the right or left and right output coupler and uh, demonstrate this chiral behavior of the transmitted light. So the next step is to uh, uh, use the topological protection and, and form a ring resonator. So we design a ring resonator in the shape of a triangle and um, our FTTD simulation uh, demonstrates that within the bandwidth of our topological gap, we can uh, have, we have the trivial region and then we have the non-trivial region. For the non-trivial region, we, we form this uh, whispering gallery mode type resonator modes. And because of the protection, the quality factor can go quite high depending on the size of the resonator or the finesse, essentially. For bigger ring size, you can have above a million uh, quality factor in such a geometry. Whereas for the trivial modes, because of the back scattering at the corners, the cues are limited to a few thousand. So to, uh, to put this in a visualized manner, if you look at the ring resonator of size of 21, and by 21, I mean the number of unit cells in the side of a triangle is 21 rhombic unit cell. So that's how we, um, uh, that, that's what I mean by the size. So with that size, we get a 100,000 Q almost a bit more than that. And then uh, this is the shape of the resonator mode, electrical field uh, resonator mode. But for a bigger ring size, can go to a higher Q and still get this uh, absence of localization at the corners, and a higher Q. Uh, so we go ahead and make such a resonator. Again, we use the gallium arsenide membrane, uh, under etched suspended membrane uh, with this kind of dimension, small holes and nano, uh, big holes around 55 to 125 nanometer. Uh, and then we excite the ensemble quantum dots to reveal the uh, photoluminescence that then show us the resonator modes. This is how they look like. We have again the trivial region and then the non-trivial region, we observe these modes. Uh, and then we have a closer look by performing a raster map, which allows us to keep collecting from a corner of the ring uh, and then raster the excitation laser everywhere to reveal where is the light coming from, as we can see. It's mostly coming, uh, it's coming from the tightly, tight interface of our resonator. So this is one of these trivial modes. Um, and as you can see, uh, because of the presence of the scattering of the corners, the light coming from one side of it is less intense. Essentially, if you, if you like, the, the intensity drops uh, when you excite the other side of the resonator. Whereas if you look at the a non-trivial or protected mode, the intensity is fairly uniform all across the ring. So if you keep collecting from this position three, no matter where you excite, the, the light that you collect will pretty much be the same. And when we look at this quantitatively, for position one, two, and three, when we excite at these different positions and keep collecting from the same position, we, we pretty much get the same consistent count rates, which demonstrates this uh, protected propagation of light. Now, if you put uh, if you put both of these, Mahmoud, Mahmoud, you have two minutes left. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, if we put this two idea together, a chiral waveguide with quantum dots, uh, a chiral waveguide, and then a chiral ring resonator, we get a hybrid system, uh, a ring resonator coupled to a waveguide. Um, this allows us to uh, access the chirality of the ring resonator modes and collect it off the, off our chip. 
So this is the FTTD simulation. So if you have an emitter here with either sigma minus or sigma plus light, depending on the polarization of the light, light from the ring resonator mode will couple to opposite direction. So here I'm showing a quantum dot in our ring resonator excited under the presence of um, external magnetic field. And as you can see, left and right output coupler uh, shows us the opposite circular polarization being collected from the end. And if you have a look at the trivial mode, again, because there is the back is scattering at corners, the chirality is pretty much gone. As you can see, uh, we don't observe the unidirectional propagation of light that strongly anymore. So with that, I end my talk and give you a summary. So we have demonstrated a quantum dot coupled to value hole topological waveguides and also ring resonators. Uh, our system allows us to uh, directly compare um, a trivial and a non-trivial topological mode in the same lattice and show the advantage of the topological mode, both for chirality and both for and uh, protection. Also, we have the hybrid system, which allows us to uh, access the chiral uh, ring resonator modes in a resonator geometry. Uh, this is the reference for the for the work, uh, and then our next plans are to do a resonant transmission similar to what we've already done in in the Sheffield's group for W1 waveguides, and also some more advanced topological optical gates. Thank you, and if you have any questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the nice talk. Uh, so it. You should raise hand if you want to ask questions, as usual, as we do uh, all the day. Okay, so I might start myself. Uh, so what is not extremely clear for, well, there are several things which are not completely clear, I would say. So the first one is why the uh, circularly polarized emission coupled to a specific valley state. What is, uh, the, the, there is a coupling visibly, but uh, why is it so? You, uh, maybe you said, but I, I missed this point. Um, well, the, the, well, I guess if I have a, I go here, I suppose. Mm. So in the, in the, in the waveguide geometry, you have a value hole mode, a value hole mode, both one propagating for, into forward running mode and one backward running mode. And it, the, one of them corresponds to the positive circular polarization, the other one to the negative uh, circular polarization. So this when is, we apply uh, this is not evident to me at all, honestly. Uh, these valley states are uh, wave vector states. They correspond to some uh, wave vector of uh, the only, okay, uh, Dirac point of the onecom lattice somehow with one direction of propagation and then it tells nothing about circular polarization of, of light or I don't I don't quite understand your question can you the valley and, the, and, the, and the polarization of light is not the same the valley state in your lattice it is a wave vector state mm -hmm. well and the, the wave vector well, and polarization is not the same so just to understand I would like to, to understand why it is so it is visibly like this uh, I, but why well, I mean, as far as my understanding goes, the uh, in in this in here, the group velocity is determined by the slope, and we have one mode at k point and the other mode at k prime point. If that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, yes. So, and then obviously, depending on the polarization of your light, you will couple either to one uh, mode or the other one. So. Yes, but it's not clear why, in fact. In what you say, I, uh, it's certainly like this, but uh, I am asking you why, just to explain. <laughs> uh, I believe in a in a spin hole system, which we, this is pretty much the same. The polarization of light plays the same role as the spin of an electron. So, uh, if that makes sense, I suppose. Uh, and then it, it's in a, it's like this is a photonic analog of a, a quantum hole system, isn't it? So. Uh, the polarization of light here plays the same role that the, the spin of electron plays in an electronic system. That's the spin off will go forward, it couples to a forward running mode, and the other one to the backward running mode. Here, the polarization is the same physics. As, well, I don't know the mathematics, uh, part, if that's what you're asking. Uh, no, because the va in May principle, the valley and uh, polarization is not the same. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, okay. Diva, so, you want to ask? Oh, Mohamed, yes. 
Yes. One May more. I comment? Uh, because I'm not going to talk about this, but we, we looked at maybe that that helps. So when I solve the Maxwell's equation, I, I have to solve it in a cell. It's a periodic system and I have to uh, solve it in a, in a unit cell. Let's say it's a, a honeycomb cell. And then I get P orbitals uh, and D orbitals. Mm -hmm. Now, since I don't break time reversal symmetry, I have two pairs of P orbitals, two pairs of D orbitals. Now, these are degenerate. So I can have a P plus P minus or P X P Y depending on how you want to write it. But then I can actually write it in P plus P minus if, if I want to look at the, something that has circular, report, circular polarization. And this circular polarization is not transverse circularized. It's actually in plane and transverse. There are two components to it. So then uh, if I write it basically those, two, if I just solve my Max's equation and look at this P plus and P minus orbitals, those are my polarizations. Well, yes. Yes. Maybe so yes. then if the pattern of my orbital corresponds to the P plus and P minus of an emission of a dipole, then I have a better chance to couple to that. And it's just overlap integral between the uh, oh, this uh, TEM mode and, and the emission of a dipole. Okay. I know that. So I, 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 I so yeah. anyway, I, I see from your With paper and yeah, that it happens like this, and clearly because it's because uh, your emission couples preferentially to this, indeed, to this valley state, because mm -hmm. overlap is. Uh, right. But then, uh, well, I mean, it's not that straightforward in principle. No, 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 it is not, and it actually moves as a function of position. If your quantum dot is not at the right position then you can actually couple to both both of them. And that, that's what we saw in the experiment, that um, one of the referees would actually push us a lot that said, oh, okay, this, this is spin momentum locking doesn't happen all the time. And it's true. Uh, it, at only specific position, uh, yeah, if you have a slide, yeah. Yeah, at yeah. only specific position, you have spin momentum locking. Okay. Uh other questions or comments? <laughs> okay. Uh, so if not, I think we can uh, thank uh, Mahmoud again.